Hey, I'm Zanzi. Welcome to Farmer's Inside Track, episode 173. I'm your host, Donumdu. In South Africa, cherry farming is profitable. We're considered to be one of the world's leading producers of sweet cherries. Plus, our favorable climate conditions are conducive for their growth. In this edition, we share the one-on-one on starting a cherry farm in Mzanzi, especially if you're a new farmer or newly commercialized farmer. Food for Mzanzi commercial journalist Octavius Pandil chats to Fanny Groblar from Valgelegen Cherry Estate in the Eastern Free State. Over to you, Octavia. Thank you, Dawn. Fanny, let's kick it off with an overview of the cherry industry in South Africa. What's our standing globally? South Africa is currently ranking 59th in the world, measuring production in metric tons. Turkey is first with 30% of the market share globally and South Africa 59th with a market share of 0.01% of the global production of cherries. Could you list the best regions to grow cherries in Mzanzi? In South Africa, small farmers are still rare. It's only grown in the Western Cape, Eastern Free State and in Kumalanga and other small farms as well, but that's the main areas that cherries are grown in South Africa. Could you list the common pests and diseases and ways to mitigate it? There are different causes to different uh, diseases. Some happen during pruning, some are when you don't take care when you prune. But once again, there are preventative measures, sprays that you can spray to prevent and to minimize damage and actions that can be taken. Most of them are just commercially level, is treated or mitigated in insecticides and pesticides. But there are other ways that can be fought off. A lot more labor intensive and not cost effective. Any advice in terms of harvesting? Is it labor-intensive? Harvesting, it is labor-intensive. We harvest by hand. Each cherry is picked individually by hand by a laborer. I believe ensures the best quality of cherry and the best product for the customer. I believe there are other ways, other technology out there that can be utilized, but I believe a hand-picked is the best quality. And finally, farmers are currently dealing with issues around SA ports opting for freight instead. What is your advice to farmers on this matter? Innovative ways to reach other markets perhaps? My advice, I would say, just keep a cool head and do your homework early enough so that you've got a plan B. But I think there's a lot of things that's happening out in the world globally that's beyond our farmers' control. We need to play it by ear and hopefully we can get the support from South African markets to keep it local. Support the farmers. Great to have you back with us here on Farmers Inside Track, Octavia. And of course, a pleasure having you with us as well, Fanny Groblar from Valgelegen Cherry Estate in the Eastern Free State. From me, Don Numdu, Octavia Spandil, our producer Megan van der Vent, and the rest of the Food Film Zanzi team have an absolutely amazing week. Bye for now. Life in South Africa can be a lot. I mean, scroll through Twitter for a minute and tell me I'm wrong. Thank God for South Africans though, right? We're inspiring and even on the bad days, we fight back with a smile. That's why I love Food for Mzanzi so much. They're not ashamed to celebrate the ordinary unsung heroes who work every day to put food on our nation's tables. Go to foodformzanzi.co.za and never miss an inspiring story.